This is Paul Colton from Pixate, and uh, today I wanted to show you a quick example of getting started with Pixate while you're using Ruby Motion. Now, I'm not a Ruby Motion or Ruby expert, but I can get you far enough to show you how to install both from scratch and kind of get going. So here, Ruby Motion's installed, Pixate's been installed, and basically nothing else. So let's do a really quick um, project from scratch and kind of see how we might integrate uh, Pixate into it. So we'll start by just saying motion create and let's create just some simple buttons. We'll go into button here and um, let's go into the app and uh, let's start by adding basically a button. So uh, just so I don't make too many mistakes, I'll copy paste a little bit of code here. So there we'll create a new window. Now we'll create a, um, we'll create a button. There we go. So just a rounded rect button. Um, I'll go ahead and type this. We'll set the title of this button to how about hello world. And then for the, we'll just make it for the default state of UI control state normal. And we'll, we'll just position the button kind of arbitrarily at this point, say 120, 50, and um, we'll make it 90, 40 big. And at this point, we'll just add, we'll add the button to the main view. And finally, we'll display the main window, make key and visible. Okay, so if we just run that, all right, there we go. So we have our button, great, everything works. So now, um, we've got that. Now, how do we basically style the button with Pixate? So the first step we want to do is, uh, if you haven't already, but we'll go ahead and do it, is, um, is install the uh, Ruby Motion Pixate gem. So it's called Motion Pixate. So I'm just doing a gem install Motion Pixate. Let that do its thing. Okay, there we go. Now we're installed. And at this point, we'll go back out here and we'll edit the rake file. And in the rake file, you just have to add a few things. At the top, we've got to require basically Ruby gems and then our motion pixate gem. And then after uh, the app name, we have to add just uh, basically three lines. We have to add the user and key of the license and then reference the pixate, uh, pixate framework. So that's what this looks like right here. And don't get too excited. This is a temporary license that expires, but you would put your username here, the license you've got from your license copy of pixate there, and then the uh, pixate framework um, is right there. So one thing that means, of course, is that if you don't already have, and of course in a new project you would not, is you need a vendor directory. You need it there. And then inside that vendor directory, you need to have basically the Pixate framework. Now I will just symbolically link this from, I think I've got a copy on my desktop. Yep, and then frameworks. And basically you want the PX Engine framework um, folder that's the actual framework right there so um, i'm going to clear here if you list there it is the framework and we're inside our vendor directory so at this point um, i can just do rake again to run you can see this time it's added the pixate stuff and there you go again we haven't styled anything yet but now pixate is part of your project all right so how do we style it well pretty easily let's go into resources and um Let's add a default.css. So if you create a file called default.css, um, that gets loaded automatically. You don't have to do any kind of loading or anything. You can load your own custom files from wherever you want. You can actually load them from the network, from your bundle, wherever. But if you call it default CSS as a default resource, um, that gets loaded automatically. So how can we simply style the button we have? Well, generically, you can just style a type. So in this case, you can just say button. In other words, we haven't named it. We haven't given it an ID or class. So this really says style all buttons. So to, um, to do very simplest, let's just say background. Background color of the button. And we'll say linear gradient. And how about we just go from, I'll just pick these two random looking colors. And... Um, how about we just do that, actually? So now we go back out and type break. So notice what's happened. Now we've automatically styled, actually any button we add will be styled with this kind of light to uh, darker green 
thing. Now notice the button is now square. Since we've defined a background color, um, you've lost the default roundedness of a rounded rect button. Um, and by the way, we recommend using a custom button versus rounded rect, but both will work just fine. So how do we round that? Well, you know, now it's a matter of just having fun with your CSS. Let's go ahead and um, add that and let's just give it a border radius. Let's give it, oh, that's maybe too big. How about six pixel border radius? And then to have even more fun, let's, let's give it a really thin black border, say border color black, border width, how about one pixel? And that's it, and now I type rake again. And there we go, and actually, because the background's black, we can't see, um, you know, we can't see the border, but, but it's there. So there you go, you can see it's still a functioning button. So what's nice is, let's go in to our app, and if we add another button, so let's just copy this one. I'll just say button two. And then this one, let's move it down a bit, about to 100. And let's say, let's, hello, hello again. Let's run that. Okay, oh, we didn't add it to the view. So. We forgot to add the second button to the view. So there we go. There we go. So now we have hello world and hello again. And lastly, I'll show you one more thing that's relevant is why don't we, um, why don't we name them this time? Instead of just generically um, styling all buttons, let's name um, this first one. Here we can give it a style ID and you can say, how about we call it um, my button. Now, how do you reference that? Of course, that's just regular CSS. So now we can say all buttons are that way, but my button, we want its background color to be a little different. How about we'll just go from yellow to red. So essentially that style is only that's a very specific button. So we'll do rake. So there you go. So now notice this one now goes from yellow to red and this one is still that way. And then finally, I'll show just one more thing is you can also apply a class ID, which basically lets you, um, a style class rather, you know, let you um, style a group of, of controls. In other words, a, a whole uh, collection of them by a single class name. So why don't we just say um, my button, how about my button set? So in that case, I want to put that on both buttons because now I want to be able to style any of my buttons that have this particular class. So now both of these have a class of my button set. So now if I go to resources, add, edit that, how about we say we want my button set and notice I use the dot, that's how you access classes versus IDs. And how about for this one, we'll just say font weight bold. So basically any of my buttons in this set I want their font to be bold. So there you go, you can see it's a little bit bigger, it's now been bolded, and, uh, and that's it. So this is kind of the first, uh, the first example. There's a lot more you can do. Um, you can actually uh, set it up so you can edit the CSS dynamically and the views will just update as you edit without having to rerun rake every time, and, um, and a whole lot more. Thank you very much.